So, got your body template. Well, for this to become an actual instrument body at some point, this template needs to make it onto wood. So first off, start with the plywood, go from there. So the plywood is the most straightforward. Main thing you gotta look for is just areas like this where there's knots in the wood. Um, if you're painting your instrument a solid color, that doesn't really matter from an appearance standpoint, but uh, this side doesn't have any knots. So knots, uh, when you hit them with this, the jigsaw, they're more likely to have tear out or to be difficult to cut through. So I'm gonna have this be the, the outside, have the knotty side be the inside of the instrument. So that means I'm gonna draw my top and my back onto this side so I avoid any of those knots being visible in case they tear out. All right, so I'm actually gonna start with the back because this is for the C-shaped body. And on the C-shaped body, with the top, you actually have to cut out the bevel wings before you draw the top onto the wood. So I'm gonna flip it over. Just remember the back is upside down relative to the front. So now that I have this lined up, so I know that I am going to have this instrument be painted a solid color, metallic purple specifically. So I'm going to not care about grain. Um, once again, this is plywood, there's a lot of sandwiches, layers, it really doesn't matter about grain except for appearance. So if I was making this a visible uh, grain guitar where I was just staining it, I would go, you know, front to back along the lines here, try to pick up some of these pretty grain lines. Um, but since I'm painting this solid color, it really doesn't matter, so I'm gonna do it here in the corner just to save wood and get as much mileage out of this piece of plywood as possible. So, I got that there. I'm gonna get some double-sided tape and put it down in some strategic areas in order to make sure that it doesn't move while I'm drawing the lines because that would be very problematic. We don't want that to happen. Double stick tape, you are my friend. Double stick tape, you keep stuff stuck in place until the end. Not, not usually, but just for some period of time. You can tell that this video is wearing on me because I'm starting to sing to myself on camera. That's when you know it's getting bad. And we're just getting started, kids. Just getting started. So maybe it'll be some very interesting ad-libbing by the time this thing's over. <clears throat> can hope, right? Can dream. Oker doker. So that's stuck down very nicely. So now I'm going to take my Sharpie marker and try to trace directly along the outside edge as accurately as I possibly can. Boop. And then we'll move on to the top. left this marker out and it's dried up. So, going purple. It's again appropriate due to the finish that the cello tar is going to have. Boop, boop, boop. 
It's interesting. There's a uh, there's like a delay, but you can see the, uh, the sharpie marker soak into the wood. Like it spreads out after it uh, after it goes on. It's interesting. So you see some places I'm kind of drawing wide of the template. Not an accident. I'm just going back and making sure to hit right against the edge so that when I go back and cut, I'll know that that inside line is correct even if it's messy and goes wide outside. Okay. Now let's peel this off. Do, do, do. So there's our back drawn out. Once again, front top is reversed. So now we're doing that was printed lines on the opposite side, now it's printed lines facing up. So I'm going to kind of have this along the curvature of itself, <laughs> but with some gap there. You don't want to put it too close because as you're cutting, you know, things might tear out or you just want to give yourself a little room um, trying to cut both lines simultaneously and having it right up against it that's that's scary not not interested in doing that um, lots of things can go wrong okay so I had to stop for a few days um, when I realized that the template was missing a lot of really critical information so now we have a much more complicated template. <coughs> um, it's much more information rich. And there's a separate top and back template. So, a back template should agree with the flipped over front template. And indeed it does. <coughs> so, here's. <coughs> Here's the different things we gotta we gotta mark out. Um, so this is the back plywood, and as a result, um, and because this is the back plywood, we're going to be cutting out the entire shape. But <clears throat> because it is the back. We also are going to have to cut out the area for the cavity cover. And this is designed to fit a standard P base or jazz base cavity cover, just because it's a nice uh, semicircle and big. And this should give us a lot of room to work inside the instrument to install the pickups, <coughs> pickup system. So we gotta cut that out, and that is this dotted line on the outside there. So <clears throat> we actually want to do this. So we actually need to do this last, or else we're gonna have to have another copy of the template. Um, the, or we could get, uh, could just print out just this one page of the template in order to reuse that. Um, it's up to you however you want to do it. What I'm going to do <coughs> is I'm going to rewind and start with cutting out the side wings because for that um, the line is is smaller so I can cut that out first and then cut out the bigger hole for the, uh, the back plate and not have to have more than one template. Um, and then the other thing we gotta cut out here is the output jack <coughs> um, hole, which <coughs> once it's glued together, uh, which we also have to cut through the oak core, um, but it's right in front of the tail riser piece, because the oak core, aside from the neck riser and the tail riser, 
is only a half inch thick and it runs along the inside back of the instrument. <coughs> um, the tail riser and neck riser sections are the only ones where the oak is double layered and the full inch in height. Um, so, anyway, same story with the top. Um, Same story with the top, we're going to have, <clears throat> a lot of things are marked out on the on the top and the back, so you can choose, um, so you have reference points from both sides depending upon uh, when you go to cut it and which uh, template you're working with when you do that particular cut. So we have the output jack um, hole, <clears throat> which really which is only going to be on the back and the wooden and the oak core, but I have it there just so that you have reference points for everything to line up. And, um, and a good way to test and make sure that you have printed and assembled these templates correctly, or at least consistently uh, correctly, is that you printed it without, um, without any page scaling. Um, because if that's, if you don't uh, print it without page scaling, then you're in for a world of trouble for things being the wrong size. Um, but if you've assembled these correctly, then the top template and the back template should perfectly match each other, which is what we want and what we're going to need to have this thing fit together correctly. So. All right, so enough talking. So like I said, the first thing we need to do is we need to cut the pine wings. Um, and for this build, <clears throat> this is the C style body. Um, C for, for carved, because we were gonna have these carved bevels on the sides. And for the C style body, I'm going to assume you have two, uh, two tools that for the F-style build you don't need. And technically you don't need for the, well you do need for this if you're going to do the bevels. Um, though I guess you could technically jigsaw out those bevels at an angle, but it would be difficult uh, to get that to look right. Though technically it could work. Um, but you see these dotted lines here on the opposite side from the access door. It says optional pine wings skill saw cut line to avoid needing a router. So for this build, <clears throat> I am going to uh, be using a router and assuming that you have one, but then I will show you in the F style build um, how to do it without the router. Um, which is basically just cutting uh, a second, cutting the, uh, the smaller uh, lower bout uh, hollowing it out, as well as doing that to the upper bout, um, whereas with the router you don't need to do that because we can just uh, go in and recess the top using the router without having to cut out the entire thing. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and put those marks on the wings and show you how to get going on that. Alright, so uh, as I mentioned before, this, um, these pre-made stair boards, yeah, a real one inch thick board is hard to come by. It's also hard to come by, um, is a perfectly straight line. And so for mating the oak wood core to the pine wings, we need perfectly straight lines. So, um, one thing that I do is a shortcut, and to not need anything like a planer or anything crazy like that, is I just use the already factory straight lines of the side of the board. So, that's right, yes, it's a little wasteful, but we can only cut our pine wings 
along this edge because this rounded edge, um, which is great if this is a stair, um, is of com no use to us at all because there's no way to get that flat enough and perfectly straight uh, using the hand tools that, uh, that I have access to and that I'm teaching you to build this with. So we will only use the straight side of this pine tread. So what does that look like? Well, there is a, a dotted line, a pair of dotted lines running down the middle of the template here that says approximate oak core edge and there's dashed lines running through the middle of the template. <clears throat> so that is what we are going to be basing our alignment on. So what you do is <clears throat> and go all the way down there's a knot there, so I'm going to want to scoot. See, there's a knot here, so I'm going to want to scoot in just enough to avoid that knot with my outline, because that would be really hard to cut through. Um, so once again, this is a full actual inch thick, and it's very thick. Um, so it's going to it's going to work our jigsaw pretty hard. Um, so we don't want to have to deal with knots or anything like that. It's going to make it harder on our jigsaw. So, like I said, we're scoot in to avoid the knot. Um, and we're going to line up the templates. Uh, one of the oak core edge dashed lines there. We're going to align that with this flat edge of this pine tread and I'm going to start taping it down. If it moves, just line it back up. And you can kind of pinch the uh, corner over a little bit to see if uh, to see if you're actually getting it lined up or not. So we've got the back there. Move to the front. And good. scoop bevel. Make sure it gets all the way under there so that it's not going to interrupt the flow of your marker. <laughs> Alright, and so we only need two wings because the wings are the full depth of the body, the full one inch. Um, so this board gives us plenty of space get those two get those two wings in um, but then if you make a second one you have to buy another piece of pine tread you're not going to have enough for two um, so got that taped down get our appropriately purple marker and Trust me, with the glue up that we have to do between the oak core and these pine wings, um, there's just no way, unless you have a planer or some kind of like table saw that can cut a perfectly straight edge, um, 
I've just never had access to those kinds of things. So this where I use the factory pre-straightened edge um, has been the winner for me. <clears throat> so one thing to note is that this being the upper bout, we have the um, access door that we need to cut out as well. So I'm just going to pull the template up, grab our scissors. going to cut along the oak core edge line. And this is why I put these on either side because while this is technically <clears throat> um, a feature of the back of the instrument, because the pine wings are the full depth of the body, we have to put the marks for this on the same side <clears throat> as the outline. So one note, make sure to uh, cut around Sure to cut around these these big tab circles, semicircles, because that is what the uh, access cavity cover is partly going to be uh, resting on. And the little hole on the inside there is where the screw is going to go. But you need the wood for it to rest on there. Um, so that it can be recessed into the back the way that I've designed it to work. So there are two of those little semicircle resting areas for the cavity cover. So make sure not to cut through them. Interesting. Okay, so now that's done, you can stick the template back down, making sure that we match the outlines uh, that we drew. Yep, 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 looks pretty good. <clears throat> and now that we have that cut out, can draw the inside the cavity cover. <clears throat> and this whole piece of wood here, uh, we have to remove in order to have access to install the pickup system through the back. Um, so I <clears throat> put an X there just to remind myself that I need to cut that out. There you go. So this is the upper bout <coughs> ready to roll. Now to keep things on the same side, can't use the top template. You need to use the back template in order to get the lower bout on there. So same deal, it's the full depth of the body, so it doesn't matter, um, it doesn't matter which side you mark, cut it from, because it's going to go all the way through on either side. <laughs> Did you, have you realized what I've done wrong yet? Yeah, it has to go that way. Uh, gonna give the upper bout 
a little bit of breathing room so that I don't uh, have any tear out or something that causes me problems later. And always double check to make sure you're doing the right thing. So, got my upper bout here. You can see the horn sticking up. And I got my lower bout with a tiny little horn uh, protrusion there from the bottom. So, yeah, that looks correct. <clears throat> that looks like my lower bout. That's what I'm intending to do. Double check the alignment. Okay, it looks good. Let's take it down. Um, now, I could have cut out the access door from the paper uh, template before I set it down. That would have been smarter. Um, and so if I was using a skill saw and emptying this out, um, I would do that now as well. But I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to use a router to recess um, recess the breathing area for the top um, in this build. But you can feel free to use a skill saw to cut that out um, if you want it f gone for weight relief or if you just don't want to have to route that much. Totally up to you, however you want to do it. Or if you don't have a router, then that that would be the way that you need to do it. Um, but once again, this is the C style body, <clears throat> so you are going to have to have an angle grinder with a carbide bit um, in order to carve out the uh, the bow scoops from the body. And the uh, F style body is narrower in the waist to uh, compensate for the lack of the carved bow, bow scoops. So this one, the, F, the C style body, <clears throat> would honestly probably be fine without the bow scoops or it's just with some aggressive uh, sanding rounding in the bow scoops. <clears throat> so you can do that if you want. Um, but the, uh, the F style is, is narrower in the waist to, to accommodate that. So, all right, got my lower bout taped down. So we draw around the template, as always. That's it for marking the, uh, the pine wings on this board. So next thing for these guys is just to cut that out, cut them out. Um, for the uh, access cavity, um, I'll cut that out first, and then come back and do the outline. Because if you do the outline first, then you're going to free this from the board and being connected to the board gives you a ton of stability to cut out something like this um, so you definitely want to remove this first then do the outline so it'll just be a lot easier you won't have to clamp um, clamp this piece down or, so, or anything like that because <clears throat> the board is going to hold it for you um, and then also this is going to get fragile through here, and you're likely to break this piece, which I mean, you can glue it back together, but you're likely to break this, this, this curved area by trying to cut this out if this piece has already been removed from the board. So definitely do the X section first. So now that we've got the pine wings marked, um, you'll note that I ended up using the top template to 
cut out the uh, access hatch. Um, so that means that I didn't need to save this. Um, so now what I need to do is because this is for the plywood back, I need to cut out this larger dashed outline that's uh, for the uh, it's just supposed to be slightly larger than the P base, jazz base cavity cover so that it can sit down inside this hole and rest on these two uh, shelves in the pine wing and then the other two holes will rest on the oak core through this section. So let's cut that out and then we can go ahead and get that marked on the body and then <clears throat> I'm also going to need to cut out this output jack hole so I need to make those two holes and then we'll be ready to draw the internal outlines. So it's always a good idea to test fit things. <clears throat> so I'm going to grab my output jack and make sure that that hole seems like it's the right size. Because <clears throat> I got that uh, got those that drawing off the internet, and I thought it was to scale, but honestly, you never know. Which is why it's always good to check, double check, triple check. Uh, everything. Always. Just check and 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 so, yeah, that seems to uh, seems to fit the inside curvature of that pretty nicely, and uh, you know the other thing to note is where the screws fall. poke through where the screws go so I can have that on there All right, so now and then if that's you know a little too small we can always just expand that uh, later but the, uh, the screws will go through the plywood and into the oak so they'll be locked in there nice and solid. All the um, all the screws, except for these two cavity cover screws, which are, there's really not any strain put on those, but every other screw in this design is designed to make sure that it goes into the oak uh, instead of the pine. So the pine is really just to fill out the space with as little weight as possible. Um, it's really not relied on for anything structural, um, especially with the plywood sandwich on top and bottom. So that's why, or <coughs> partly why we do pine. <coughs> okay, so now I need to cut out the cavity covered door. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, and I don't have these cavity covers in yet. They're supposed to arrive. Uh, what is today? They're supposed to arrive in three days. <coughs> but uh, can't wait that long due to my uh, my timetable restrictions on this project. So. I'm just going to assume that I have uh, the measurements correct based on the stated product measurements on the eBay page and based on tracing the product image. They did not have a technical diagram, but they did have a product image that looked like it was pretty much straight down. So throwing caution to the wind and using that. Alright, so now I need to line this back up inside the silhouette that we drew outside the edges and because we just need to do the uh, just need to do the output jack and gonna peek through the uh, holes that I drilled for the screws there so that I know where the screws go um, in case I, I want to expand that a little when I cut it I want to make sure not to get any closer to the screw holes or else um, it won't have any material to go into. And then, cut out this cavity cover. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I should have taped this edge because it's kind of flying up on me. That should be good enough. So again, I don't even know if that's accurate. So, what you're gonna do? Okay. So we got our back marked out. Let's double check that <coughs> that's everything. Uh, yep. Looks like we're good. Um, and you know, we keep this around for reference, and if we need, we need to go grab marks off it again later, which we will. <clears throat> okay, so now let's go ahead and do the top. <clears throat> so, I've compromised the template a bit by cutting out this access door. Uh, Access hatch there means that this area isn't going to be as as uh, stiff, and so it's more likely to uh, uh, become misshapen as I uh, transfer the template to the wood. But you know the the sandwich method of construction that I use things never line up perfectly right anyway, so it's kind of like, well, how, how far off could that really be? Like, pretty sure, pretty sure it'll be okay, as long as it's, uh, you know, in the ballpark, um, in the last step, once we get the sandwich all together, 
is to sand down all the edges to even them out and then wood fill them and sand them down again. And so that should take care of a lot of the uh, a lot of the unevenness. <clears throat> Okay, so before we cut the top, uh, we actually have to cut out the bevel regions. Don't need to do the output jack. We have to cut out the bevel regions, and we have to figure out our actual neck pocket. Because this says, bold letters, approximate neck pocket. So. All this really gives you is a general width and like where the back of the heel should should stop. But I've intentionally left these corners square because um, the shape of the back of a neck heel varies uh, a huge amount. So you can't rely on the template for this. So what you gotta do is you need to set the neck down and center it up on the pocket get everything as as uh, square and lined up as you can and then with a different color sharpie aka not black go and trace around the base of your actual neck where it attaches to the body and then before <coughs> we transfer that to the wood we're gonna cut gonna cut that out that actual shape out <coughs> because we know that, that is what the actual shape of the neck is going to be. So, <clears throat> now I've got to peel this up, hack out the, now note, I drew around the outside edge of, uh, of the neck heel. So, I want to make sure to cut the inner line So I'm getting as close to the actual neck uh, footprint as possible. And this will be something that there's uh, you know there's there's a lot of ways to adjust the fit of the neck pocket and. We will likely have to use one or more of those ways to revise this once we actually get to the point of fitting the real neck. But for now, using that silhouette of the the neck neck heels footprint is going to be as good as we can get. And as you can see, we got a pretty crazy. A uh, little thin line here. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to tape down the very end of it, and then when we actually do the wood, we'll probably only go to about there because you can't actually have plywood that thin. That that doesn't work. So this won't go quite as far up, but we'll uh, we'll get close. Um, 
So now I'm going to cut out bevel region. I shouldn't have taped that down yet. There we go. So just cut out the, uh, the edge line that separates the solid section from the hash section on either side. And these bevels, um, you know, they're not, they're, there's no way to actually nail these uh, accurately once you get the uh, angle grinder in your hands. It's, uh, you know, it's a balance between your intended outcome and the power tool wanting to destroy everything that it runs across. So, these are guides. What we're doing is we are making the plywood top, um, we're making it a guide for the very top of the bevels and that's about it um, okay so to remember that I'm, I'm not drawing the cavity here because this is the top so we're not doing that um, but I am insetting the bevels and drawing the neck pocket. So, for those of you keeping track, we're going around the outside of the neck footprint. We're on the outside, so we cut on the inside when we cut this. Now, because we're drawing on the inside, when we go back with the skill saw, we're gonna try to cut down the center line of this purple thing, because the skill saw removes enough material that your Sharpie line is about the same width as the skill saw, um, the material the skill saw is gonna remove. So try to go down the center line there in order to get the pocket accurately sized. Don't freak out if this looks super narrow. Remember, this is the very top extremity of the bevel. So it's not actually going to look that narrow. It's just going to be <coughs> the top of that feature's shape. And there we go. That, that looked pretty funky, but trust me, 
it'll uh, look good once we get it all together. Okay. Um, <clears throat> once again, I'm painting this a solid color, so I'm not worried about imperfections or direction of grain. Because once again, it's the plywood. There's no real grain because it's a sandwich of particle board bits. <clears throat> but this is our front. This is our back. We got our pine wings. So what does that leave? Oh, that just leaves the oak core. So let's cut that. The oak core is the last piece that we have to mark. So I'm gonna look at my templates here because I have the oak core marked on the front and back, but aha, you say to yourself. But with the neck, uh, the neck pocket, how are we addressing that? Well, uh, to get the height that we want for the fingerboard off the body, the neck is actually recessed through the top neck riser layer. So we do need to cut that out of this material. Then we have to cut the main body all the way from the front to the back. The, uh, the full length of the uh, of the instrument, <laughs> the instrument's body that is, and we have to cut the output jack hole, <clears throat> and is that it? So, full length of the thing with the output jack hole, not the neck cut out. Then we cut the neck riser with the neck cut out. Then we cut the tail riser and the paw riser. <laughs> oh, 90s. Um, and that's it. So three pieces. And let's get started marking them. So, <clears throat> same story. Everything else you've been doing. Line up those dotted lines that show the oak core and how it aligns with the template. <clears throat> and take a piece of tape, take down that little guy there at the end again. It's one of those things that you're like, eh, this is probably a mistake I'll pay for later. So, mark that edge, and mark the inside of the neck pocket. The reason I didn't tape this down is because there's a bunch of tape on the bottom of the template already from previous. <clears throat> and you should note to yourself that I'm doing something wrong. What am I doing wrong? Well, I drew out the, uh, I drew the neck pocket. And this is supposed to be the full body length segment. So let's fix that. So it's the curvature of the tail. And now to fix this, <clears throat> I'm going to grab the back template and I'm gonna line it up. This top back template redundancy thing is really paying off. Because uh, I keep having what we need and not needing to print an additional template, which is great. Um, so I'm using this to get me that full outline. Okay. That should be good there. Oops, if I threw over that. Alright, well, let's bring that back again. Make sure that your dashed lines line up with the edges like they're supposed to. Yeah, and 
<clears throat> there we go. I'm gonna put squiggly lines through this to let myself know that's a mistake. Don't cut that. <clears throat> All right, so now we have the full body length core <clears throat> from back to front. That's, that's good, that's what we wanted. <clears throat> All right, now we need a sacrifice. Well, the top is the obvious choice. It's already kind of full of holes. <clears throat> so what we gotta do now is we need to cut the neck riser and tail risers, tail riser parts out of the template so that we can mark out just those because those will be pieces two and three that we need to get out of the oak. All right. So there's the neck riser. Now remember this edge will be the actual edge of the wood as created in the factory. And then we're gonna grab our little piece of tape that guy down again in our highly questionable fashion that we are doing that. Yep, that already moved on me. Well, just got the top line so I can turn that back up. There we go. Don't be like me, kids. Use more tape. Don't be afraid, I know double-sided tape is expensive, and I'm a cheapskate, but really, just tape all your crap down so you don't deal with this, because it is not fun. Because anytime the template gets skewed out of shape, you find yourself thinking, how is this going to affect the way things line up later? Unfortunately, often the answer is a lot. <clears throat> there we go. That's supposed to be a straight square line, but honestly, behind this is just an air gap for the top. So it doesn't matter if that's straight. And this is already giving us perfectly straight, so we should be should be good to go. <clears throat> okay, so now, the very last piece of wood we need a template for is the tail riser. I don't know if you realize this yet, but I'm, I'm literally making these names up as I go. Um, I mean, I've built, built at least one model that uses this approach. I think it really is just one, but uh, you know, it worked really well, so that's what we're doing. All right, so the tail riser, just like the neck riser, has the sides are the actual sides of the piece of wood, which is that three and a half inch wide oak, and then the front and back. Our curves, These curves are nice, right? And that's it. All right, whoops, forgot. Forgot one thing. We have to cut out the output jack. So, that's right, that's no longer a uh, that's no longer the correct line because I cut this is inset because I cut out the excess door so I'm going to have to line up this edge with the dotted line alrighty there we go
There we go. 